Next two panels will be focusing on the situation in the Black Sea region. For the first one, turbulent waters, uh, Russian hegemony in the Black Sea, I welcome on stage Alina Inayeh, Senior Fellow, German Marshall Fund of the US. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to see that we almost have a, a full room for a discussion which is obviously very important, very timely, and very difficult, although all the problems were solved in the green room, so we are just coming here to tell you the solutions. Um, I do want to, welcome, to, to invite the panelists to join me um, on the scene, uh, and I will announce each of them as they will start speaking, so we don't do a long list of names right now. And we have another speaker uh, who should be up on the screen. Oh, hello, Mr. Lang. Can you hello, hear us? Hello, good morning, everyone. I can hear you very well. Um, as in almost every year uh, since, uh, since the forum started, which is 12 years ago now, we have a panel on the Black Sea. We have a panel on the Black Sea because we are in Romania and the Black Sea is important for Romania. But in the last few years, in the last two years at least, um, we are having a panel on the Black Sea because the Black Sea region is a theater of war because the security of the Black Sea and of the region is increasingly more complex and more difficult uh, with the war in Ukraine, but not only with the war in Ukraine, with everything that is going on now in the Middle East um, and with, with, uh, with the conflicts which are somewhat surrounding us. Um, and with the great powers, uh, to use a term which was very much used in the, uh, uh, in the history of Romania, uh, with the great powers being preoccupied with a lot of other things. We'll be, we'll be trying to untangle the security of the Black Sea, what is needed for the security of the Black Sea, obviously what is lacking, and if anything can, uh, can be done. Uh, as I said, with five wonderful speakers, and I'm very happy that we have here people who are extremely knowledgeable and very involved in the security of the Black Sea. And I will start with our Romanian speaker, Julian Fota, who is the Secretary uh, of, uh, uh, State Secretary with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Romania, and ask you, well, pretty much directly, um, how safe is the Black Sea? I'm talking about the sea itself, I'm talking about the region, and what do you think, as a Romanian, is missing, is still missing, uh, for the region to be uh, as secure as possible at this moment and in the future? So, good morning to everybody, and thank you uh, for having me. Uh, coming from the host countries, I was convinced I will be the last one in this panel, but anyway, I will do my best to break the ice. How safe is the Black Sea for the moment? Uh, Black Sea is far from being safe, but on the other hand, if you look at the strategic balance between Russia and Ukraine, and oh, uh, I think that uh, Ukraine uh, did an excellent thing, uh, and that's why the, now the strategic balance seems to be uh, the strategic balance seems to to be in a better uh, shape. Ukraine uh, had a very uh, successful counteroffensive, you know, on, on, on the Black Sea, and uh, and I think this is a fact which is sometimes ignored. If you look at the old counter-Ukrainian offensive, which is successful in my opinion, definitely the most important achievements are on, on the Black Sea. Russia lost uh, important capabilities uh, in the last few months. They are uh, forced to, to, to withdraw. They are looking for a harbor now uh, on, on uh, 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 Georgian soil because uh, 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 that, that uh, harbor in Abkhazia, where the Russians are planning you know, to, to, to build a secondary uh, a naval base, is uh, a, a Georgian, uh, official Georgian uh, territory. And I think, and of course, and also we have to, to underline the fact that the situation seems to be a little bit better also because our Turkish friends are doing a great thing, you know, not letting the Russians to come with their ships uh, uh, from the Mediterranean. So, so, uh, so I think that all, uh, uh, to all, all aspects put it together, the Ukrainian bravery and, and the very smart way they are using you know, all kind of 
uh, 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 naval capabilities and the fact that, that Turkey is very, very uh, 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 tough on, on their attitude, on not letting the Russians to, to increase the number of capabilities, uh, I think uh, bring us in, in the situation we have today. And it's not an accident that the number of ships you know uh, leaving, uh, coming to Odessa and leaving Odessa is growing mm -hmm. because I see that uh, definitely Russia has some operational difficulties, you know, when it comes to their, their uh, continuous will to control the situation in the uh, Black Sea. So thanks to Ukrainians and thanks to our Turkish friends who are doing a great, great thing, not letting the Russians to bring more ships into the Black Sea. The situation seems to be a little better and I hope that the situation will be even better because uh, uh, we will end soon negotiations with, with uh, Turkey and, and, and with Bulgaria for, for uh, trilateral nice. countermining, which I, I also will, will help for uh, safer waters, you know, at least when it comes to our territorial waters. And finally, uh, uh, the strategy is better also from the political point of view, because I see a, a great, um, not, not, I see a better or a, a more defined interest, you know, for, for uh, uh, Western countries like France and, or US, or for uh, organizations like NATO, EU for the Black Sea, which is also to be taken in consideration. Mm. Um, you remind, you're, you're reminding me at least that everything is relative because you keep saying that it is better, but it also, uh, it's a matter of what we are comparing it with. Um, but I will, I will see what the others will have to say about their assessment of the, of the situation. Um, and because you're, you're talking about the interests of other countries in the Black Sea and in the Black Sea region, I do want to turn to Thomas Lenk, who is the head of division for Ukraine and the Black Sea with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in, uh, in Germany. Um, and Thomas, Germany does have an interest in the Black Sea. There is going to be a hearing, as far as, uh, as I understood, um, in, um, uh, in Germany on, on the Black Sea. Um, so there are more there are more actions taken by Germany to show uh, not only the interest in the Black Sea, as I was saying, but also very strong support to uh, to, uh, to Ukraine. Um, however, however, uh, there are voices uh, within the export community, but not only there are there are voices who are wondering how long the commitment um, Germany's commitment to the current policy it has with Russia against Russia towards Russia, how long this is going to be actually sustainable and people start, fear would be too much said, as I said, having concerns about um, a, a possible 180, uh, yet another uh, 180 uh, degrees uh, turn uh, when it comes to Germany's policies towards Russia. How, um, how, how um, uh, relevant are these concerns? How well uh, connected to the reality are those concerns um, if you can, please tell us. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'm really grateful to, uh, for the invitation to be present at this panel. Um, on your last question, yet another 180 uh, degree turn. I would not buy the assumption that there has been a 180 degree turn because we have always been supportive of Ukrainian independence. And let me remind you, uh, Germany was one of the main drivers to stop uh, the Russian expansion in 2014 uh, by driving and pushing for as hard as possible uh, at that time sanctions against Russia. And in a way it worked to uh, stop this expansion then. Um, this is not saying that uh, we, we have not uh, learned since, and I think the word Zeitenwende uh, in a way sim symbolizes our way of learning um, about the, uh, the nature of the Russian regime at the moment. Um, so I think every, we can all be assured that uh, the support of Germany for the sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence of, of Ukraine is uh, fully unbroken. Um, we will support Ukraine as long as it takes and that means also that we will uh, take commitments to su support uh, Ukraine well beyond the end of this war. Um, you all know about the G7 uh, statement uh, from Vilnius um, this July and um, the bilateral commitments of most of our countries to, um, to talk with Ukraine about long-term security. Um, having said that, maybe one word on, on the Black Sea, one of the guiding questions.
questions of, for this panel is, is the Black Sea a Russian lake and will it remain so? And I think this is something we all have to, um, to ask ourselves. Maybe we have been a bit too, we've been looking away in a certain way when Russia made fait accompli in the Black Sea, even before the annexation of Crimea in 2014. Uh, there's, there's a consistent string of moves to occupy the ground in the Black Sea to, to get control militarily over more and more um, of, of the area. So this, in a way, this is the past and uh, it's, it's high time that we wake up to this, um, to this past and, and get aware of it. Uh, when it comes to the future, I think the Black Sea can actually be called a European lake. And since this week, more than, more than ever, uh, very soon, all the countries, all the neighboring countries to the Black Sea, except for Russia, will be either EU member states, EU candidate countries, such as Ukraine and Moldova, or have an EU, and, and Turkey, of course, or have an EU perspective, such as Georgia. Um, I think I stop here and we'll be happy to continue later. Thanks. Um, because we are talking about new potential member states, I do want to turn to, to a country which uh, we hope in December is going to start uh, to open negotiations for its EU accession. Stanislav, Stanislav Sekrieru is the uh, National Security Advisor of Moldova. Uh, Stanislav, I will ask you very, very simply and very bluntly, how secure is Moldova? How secure do you feel Moldova is? And what would Moldova need? to enhance its security. And do not, I'm not only talking about military security, although it's very, very uh, important. Uh, first, uh, thank you for invitation. Amazing event, GMF and Aspen. Congratulations. If you ask me the reading of situation, it's, it's still tense and difficult, but much better than it was one year and a half ago. Um, if we look at the Black Sea, the reading of the situation from Moldovan perspective is that Russia was before 2022 pushing for revisionism in the Black Sea. What happened in 2022 is the switch from gradual towards the high-paced brutal revisionism, yeah? which obviously raised the security problems for Moldova. First, it was existential threat for Moldova. Mm -hmm. If Ukraine would fall, Moldova would be next. There is no doubt for us. Secondly, it raised issues of economic resilience and security of Moldova because for us, Danube and Black Sea is a lifeline through which we export but also import our port in Jujulesh. But then the, second, the third one was most important is that what Russia was doing and still does in Black Sea is the challenge for international law. Uh, it's the challenge for rule-based uh, order in the region. Uh, we are the small country. The protection for us is international law. Obviously, we strive for restoring international law in the region. This perception is actually reflected in our draft of national security strategy, in which we mentioned four times a uh, Black Sea region. Mm. We mentioned Black Sea region in the context of insecurity. We mentioned Black Sea region in the context of our uh, national security objectives. Uh, and we as well mentioned it, it in the context of uh, uh, lines of actions which we propose to do in order to restore peace and stability there. On our side, we do several things. First, we're investing in our armed forces. Yeah? First time in 30 years, we are taking it seriously because we see that the role of hard power, unfortunately, increased. Secondly, we do our best to support Ukraine. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on, on this level, we do bilateral support. For instance, we were helping Ukraine to prepare for this winter with uh, delivering uh, electric equipment, which will help them to prepare for uh, this uh, difficult winter. We as well support all the initiatives on bilateral and diplomatic level. At the same time, we would like to see much bigger presence of European Union in the region, because we see that enlargement, European integration is another way to address security problems in the region. EU is becoming a security actor. EU is influencing the military balance in the region. EU is helping us through EU European peace facility, which as well contributes to modernization of armed forces. Well, while Russia cannot reach us militarily, we face the whole or a myriad of hybrid threats. Yeah? Here we have to deal with disinformation, cyber attacks. We had last 
We first round of elections. We had cyber attacks on the critical infrastructure to disrupt the way the votes are counted and presented on the website. But at the same time, the biggest problem for us, and probably will stay for two years, is the illegal financing of political parties. This is how Russia is trying to influence uh, our uh, democratic processes, to abuse of the democratic process, but also to take back control uh, over political and economic power in Moldova. On our side, there is a determination to conduct reforms, to move closer to you, to help uh, Ukraine, and to be part of any trilateral or multilateral initiatives on the uh, Black Sea region level. We salute the initiative of Romania, Turkey, and Bulgaria to do the demining, because it helps us as well to conduct in a peace and no peaceful and normal way our economic activities via Danube to the Black Sea. I will stop here and... Yeah. Um, I will, I will then turn to, uh, turn to the uh, southern part of the sea. We have been talking extensively about the northern part of the sea. Um, and ask uh, uh, Basatos Turk, who is, let me see if I get you, get your title correctly, uh, correctly uh, Director General for International Security Affairs uh, with the um, uh, MFA of, of, of Turkey. Um, is the Black Sea a Russian lake? Thank you very much. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I would like to start by commemorating our founder, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. This is the date of commemoration. 85 million people in Turkey stopped life for a minute this morning, everywhere, on mm. streets, at houses, offices, and also in abroad, even including in Bucharest, we had a ceremony in front of the Atatürk uh, Monument. Uh, yes, monument. And uh, just also, I would like to start uh, by also taking his fundamental guidance for Turkish nation, and I think which should be inspiring us all. Peace at home, peace in the world. This is our fundamental policy, and it will remain so. What he said about the alliance with Romania in 34 after Balkan Pact, we said together, for Turkey, the alliance with Romania is a source of ongoing happiness. I personally, the Turkish government, as well as the people of Turkey, all believe that the strength of our friends is a strength of, for ourselves. I declare and will always declare and remain true to my words that the power of Romania is as dear to us as our own power. Above all is the feeling that we are bound to stay together. In our hearts, Romania is praised as a brother and sister. So it's not a coincidence, our fundamental policy foreign policy, security policy is the same. So in this context, we come to the Black Sea, and the Black Sea, first, by definition, is not a lake. It is a sea. It is a semi-enclosed, enclosed sea. And it's not going to be a Russian lake, or NATO lake, or European lake at all. It's going to be a sea for the literal countries, allies, mm -hmm. and in this spirit, Romania, Bulgaria, and Turkey now started to prepare a mine countermeasure task group. This is also exactly the tasking from NATO Vilnius Summit. Paragraph 79 of Vilnius Summit, just we had in July recently, says that all 30, 31 heads of state and government agreed to support the allied regional efforts to uphold safety, security, freedom of navigation in the Black Sea and in accordance with Montreal Convention. And here I come to the rules-based order or international law. Montreux Convention is part and parcel and fundamental piece of international law and regulations, rule of order, whatever you call it, in the Black Sea for 87 years, since 1936. It survived the Second World War. It survived the Cold War. It survived the Russia-Georgia War. It survived the annexation and occupation of Crimea. It even survived the most recent war. Why? Because it is such a convention which really provides strategic stability in the Black Sea itself. The conflicts in the Black Sea region are all on land. There is not a battle in the maritime domain. So this is very important to recognize. The only real danger are the drifting mines in the Black Sea, the sea surface, and we are taking care of it. Uh, with Romania, Bulgaria, we will form a mine countermeasure group 
and we will take care of this risk and threat all together. So this is my answer to your question. It's not a lake, it's a sea for literal countries, first of all. But if the European Union also would like to take Turkey as a member soon, <laughs> uh, it may become you know, more influential in the Black Sea to the extent it is ready for that. Otherwise, the longest coast of Black Sea is Turkey. My German friend, you will not have a uh, Black Sea as you define. Thank you. Um, th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this. One thing which I noticed from, uh, from your remarks um, is that we, we got used to the war. We got used to having a war in the Black Sea. Mr. Fota starting by saying, it's a little bit better. It's better than it was last year. And everybody, we are all, it, I, I, even myself at times, I find myself referring to these days and accepting that the war is there and the war is going to be there and trying to adjust to it. And I turn to, to, to the American on the panel <laughs> because we are talking about the interest of uh, big states, uh, of big countries, uh, of, of great powers um, in the Black Sea. Everybody, everybody is saying, including uh, the, uh, the American president, uh, that, uh, or mo most of the countries are saying, that they are going to, supp uh, to support Ukraine um, as much, uh, as long, as long as it takes. But as a friend here in the room would probably tell us again, it would be better if they would say, um, we, we support Ukraine as much as it takes. So the war is actually over and we can actually talk about the security of the, um, of the Black Sea. time uh, that sanctions and popular support will erode over a period of time, whether through fatigue or political uh, division, as you're seeing, in fact, in the United States and Europe itself right now. So in fact, this, this uh, emphasizes that Ukraine must win its war soon. And in order to do that, this means that the United States, NATO, and the EU must maximize today all the available tools while they are still effective and politically viable. Stabilizing the region, we understand, requires more than just Ukraine winning. Uh, it also in, uh, requires an enhancement of NATO's presence in Romania and Bulgaria, providing security assistance to Black Sea states, 
to strengthen their deterrence and defense capabilities, leveraging sanctions uh, to get Russian troops out of Georgia and Transnistria, and most importantly, early membership in NATO, EU, OECD, and the Three Seas Initiative for the Black Sea states that are not in those organizations today. Um, removing the Russian military threat and integrating Black Sea states into those uh, Western organizations or European organizations, we believe will set the conditions for uh, peaceful and a, a peaceful and prosperous region. Uh, with your permission, Madam Chair, I will go on to a specific proposal that is not part of the Atlantic Council's paper, uh, but it's the, um, we dubbed the Shapiro thesis, um, uh, and, um, and, and it's with complete respect to my new best friend, uh, Basat, that I make this suggestion. Uh, in fact, I appreciated your remarks because by citing Montreux and your adherence to the terms of Montreux, you actually uh, make my, my case. So this proposal is, is one to call for full compliance with Montreux. And by that I mean, um, uh, th and the goal of this is to enhance Black Sea stability, to uh, reduce Russian attacks on Ukraine grain ports, storage, and ships, and here I do disagree that there's no surface warfare. There indeed is surface platform and uh, naval uh, contestation. A third party ship was hit just uh, two days ago and a, and a, and a man killed in, re in that, in that uh, endeavor. Uh, this also enhances the ability of Ukraine uh, to get its grain out uh, and Moldova to have its commercial lifeline with grain flowing, food moves, global food prices may fall uh, and um, I note that, in fact, I don't think that, from the statistics I saw, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fota, uh, the, the, um, the grain corridor visits into Odessa ports actually has fallen down to like one and a half ships per day from a, a high of 20 some odd early in the, in, in the period. So uh, we need to reverse that, and this proposal is designed to do that. It also will provide some coastal defense to Romania and Bulgaria, and in the process, Moldova and, um, and uh, provide some income to uh, Ukraine's courageous farmers. So it's um, with full acknowledgement that Turkey is an essential partner, not only uh, in the Black Sea region, but in the entire region that I make this suggestion. And this is with respect to Turkey's purported ban on non-belligerent warships transit through the Straits. This is in contravention of the Montrose provisions, uh, Montreux Conventions, Provisions. We know that Article 19 specifically permits non-belligerent warships to transit the Straits in times of war when Turkey has not declared itself threatened by uh, imminent war and when it uh, has not, um, it was not a belligerent itself. So at this moment, um, that would be the condition. Uh, nonetheless, we, we, uh, we cannot sugarcoat the effect of this ban and the ban is a perception ban or a legal ban, which I disagree with, but the, 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 the result of the ban is that we cede the field to the Russian Navy. It's the only active Navy in the Black Sea, and its ability to launch cruise missiles into residential neighborhoods in Ukraine demonstrates how important uh, it would be to uh, undo that. So I, I would call on Turkey to with, withdraw its ban on non-belligerent warships transiting the Straits, and perhaps it means that, perhaps you don't have to withdraw it, you just say that you really didn't mean non-belligerent uh, uh, nations because when you view your foreign minister statement, it's ambiguous, but it has been interpreted and taken to mean a complete, a complete ban. Uh, and um, the purpose of this would be to allow warships in to conduct grain convoys out from the Odessa ports. That in itself would be a deterrence to Russian attacks as those Western multinational convoys, which we would hope would include, if not be led by uh, Turkey in that respect. So Russia would be deterred from attacks on ports, storage, and ships as a result of the convoy's mere presence, which can be in fact constant by rotating 21 days in and out. NATO hasn't been present in the Black Sea for over two years. And so NATO should work with Turkey to remove that ban or at least the widespread misperception that it may in fact lawfully impose one, because it cannot. Uh, in addition, Montreux permit, permits Black Sea powers to come and go 
with notice to Turkey, of course. It's an it's a eight-day notice under the convention. So the proposal continues that outside of the Black Sea, we reflag to Romania surplus naval vessels uh, who could then be driven home to provide coastal defense and convoy assistance for Ukraine grain ships uh, without any duration or size restrictions under Montreux because they would belong to a Black Sea power. Likewise, we would reflag merchant vessels to Romania who can then bring them home and retrofit them in their uh, substantial shipyards to provide small naval vessels for coastal defense. These would be anti-mine, uh, mine sweeps, anti-sub, anti-air, coastal patrol. And in this regard, I know your, your involvement in creating the, the, um, the demining task force, and that really is a first step of this, and it's to be applauded. Uh, and longer term, we would call on the EU and NATO to help develop uh, riparian warship construction in Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, so with um, President Erdogan uh, leading the way uh, for both Black Sea stability and global food security, supported by NATO, this well-intentioned proposal to a good friend and partner uh, for full compliance with Montreux, and not selective compliance or blurred compliance, we believe could, or I believe, could change the course of the war. So with that, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Stephen. Obviously, everybody uh, can see that uh, he's a very good lawyer, um, uh, but thank you for not making it extremely legal, uh, legalistic. Um, if you do want to reply, you'll have, a, you have the opportunity to reply, right. but... But then I, <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, but then I also want to take two questions from, from the room. So please go ahead. Thank you. And I respect, of course, what you have just said. Uh, uh, it happens to be the case that I was director for maritime aviation for five and a half years, uh -huh. also uh, implementing the Montreal Convention, including during the Russia-Georgia war mm -hmm. in 2008. So reading the Montreal Convention alone and making interpretations would not be sufficient, my good friend. Even if they are well-intentioned, there is an aki of implementation of 87 years. And you need to consult with me closer about that. <laughs> and in this context, I have to say that all the Russian ships belonging to Russian Black Sea Naval Fleet also have the right to return to the Black Sea according to Montreal Convention. If they were separated from their base. They, yeah, they are separated. They are outside the Black Sea, more than 20. I'm not going to give you the f exact figure, but more than 20. Why can't they come back? Because we have persuaded Russians that it would be better for them to stay outside the Black Sea. The Moscow cruiser, the ad flagship of the Russian uh, Black Sea naval fleet, was hit by two Neptune missiles not launched by a ship from land. Mm -hmm. So any ship coming to Black Sea, because it's an enclosed sea, can be hit from anywhere in the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. So if the United States is prepared to enter into a war with Russia involving NATO, involving nuclear weapons, and we will start the Third World War, then I think we have to make a more serious discussion about the complications we may be facing. And also, we should not forget the other war now, which started just yeah. to the south of Turkey, which was so brutal. In only one month, the number of civilians killed in this war are far more than the total number of civilians killed in two-year war from Russia to Ukraine. So this is also something going on. It may have repercussions everywhere, including on Ukraine. By the way, I have just read Economist the Ukrainian chart is not so optimistic about the situation of the war. He's talking about a stalemate, and he talks about a World War type attrition war. So how long we can continue under these circumstances? We need to see the 360 degree, all the threats and risks around us, and then, you know, really can make more meaningful, maybe, proposals for, for all of us. So we are implementing Montreal Convention, in, in spirit and in letter, uh, we are so confident about this. And also, I think NATO generals are also aware of the fact that this is maybe in our best interest. Thank you very much. Um, I do not want to turn it into a 
conversation on the Montreal Convention, although if you do have it, please invite me as well, because I'm very interested. Um, you, you, said, you, you said something in your, in your uh, presentations of the Atlantic Council report, which is the importance of removing the Russian threat. And I haven't heard yet on this panel how this is going to actually be uh, accomplished um, sooner, we hope, rather than, than later. But maybe by taking a, a few questions from the room, we can come to the answer uh, of this question. So I don't know where the microphone is. Here. It's right here. Oh, Hannah, please go there. Rufin, start asking your question if you're first. Thank you so much. My name is Hannah Hopko. I represent Ukraine. So I think when we are talking about the um, freedom of navigation in the Black Sea area, we have to start from demilitarization of the Black Sea. So my question is to the uh, representative of Turkey. So first of all, Turkey has the most powerful military potential in the Black Sea region from NATO members there. Of course, we in Ukraine are thankful to uh, Turkish government for observing the provisions of the Montreux Convention, but, and not allowing ships of Russian Navy from other fleets into the Black Sea. But Russian containers ships loaded with 122 millimeter shells manufactured at the factory near Syrian Aleppo are headed to Russian Novorossiysk via the Bosphorus. Mm. This is ammunition which later kills Ukrainian soldiers. So actually we would like Turkey to join sanctions against Russia and not to help to circumvent the sanctions through Turkey and others. Because I think in the future, uh, Turkey as a member of NATO should also be part of sanctions policy of Western nations because uh, it's not enough to be as long as it takes with Ukraine. It's important to adopt as fast as possible all decisions, including confiscation of Russian assets, more than 350 billion sovereign assets, because this would be the uh, economic blow, not allowing Russia to produce uh, more uh, rockets, cruise ballistic missiles, kamikaze drones, which are terrorizing Ukrainian civilians, especially before the winter season. So I do believe that Black Sea region is the NATO and the EU region, not Russian lake. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Let me take two more questions and then I'll turn to, to, uh, to the panelists. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. Rufin Zanfir, Global Focus Center. Uh, my question will go to, to Mr. Shapiro and, and uh, the, the, the German expert in, in the panel. Uh, Mr. Shapiro, you've mentioned um, the, the provisions, some of the provisions that uh, the Black Sea uh, strategy that your organization is putting together. Uh, and, and, and thank you for, for this. Uh, but knowing the the, the footprint, the, the, the important footprint that your organization and you yourself, sir, have in uh, DC. I was wondering how much of this strategy, the one that you drew, <clears throat> um, juxtaposes the one that the, the Congress is going to put together. And then the subsequent question to, to the German expert would be how much these two, I mean, knowing that Germany also is putting together uh, a, a Black Sea uh, strategy, how much of these two, two documents are um, creating a synergy? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there another question? Did, did you want to ask? Please go ahead. Is there? Or do you have to go to the microphone. Thank you. Hello, uh, I got a question for all of you. Um, what are the perspective of uh, Black Sea countries after the aftermath of Ukraine war? Uh, may I repeat again? What are the perspectives of, a, of the Black Sea countries after the war of Ukraine? So once the, After war, the war. once the war is over? That's yeah, yeah. After the war is over. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that, uh, that was the question for all of you. Thank you. Um, should I start with... Uh, Thank you. Your, Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to be the focus. Uh, and uh, first of all, I should like to answer the question about the circumvention on sanctions. So there is no circumvention of sanctions from Turkey. 
we, as a matter of principle, implement UN Security Council sanctions and restrictions. But exceptionally, uh, we are also implementing sanctions restrictions for those goods coming from US and Europe and destined to Russian Federation. But in this context, uh, what are those things which are being uh, questioned? Are usually dual use goods and they have to be stopped at the source. So a European company, for example, can export its good through third countries, not only from Turkey, because we, we are stopping them in Turkey. Since 1st of March, there is no custom service for such goods going to Russian Federation. But there are 193 countries in the world, and they are all doing this trade. And I'm not going to mention all of them name by name. With regard to ammunition coming to Russian Federation, for example, stop, for example, North Korea, if you can. Russia does not have a coast only in the Black Sea. It has coast also in the Baltic Sea, in the Arctic, in the Pacific. We have to have this broad vision. And therefore, the best solution is to work for peace as mm. soon as possible. Of course, by respecting the territorial integrity and political unity of Ukraine. And we have worked hard on it. With regard to naval power also uh, of NATO, NATO is present in the Black Sea. First of all, three allies are literal countries. We have a significant navy, and maybe you have seen on 29th of October, the centenary of our republic, 100 pieces of ships passed through the mm -hmm. Istanbul Strait. Yes. This is, was not our full navy. Uh, you can just imagine the number of ships we have in Turkish Navy is formidable. And therefore, you know, we should not really demoralize ourselves. With regard to the post-war situation, we need to focus on energy. This is, I know, also your very attractive topic. And I am suggesting that, for example, I congratulate Romania for the discovery of 100 PCM gas in the Black Sea. We are also, as you know, working and extracting some gas from the Black Sea. 100 PCM, 100 billion BCM. This is you know, half of what Galkanish gas field in Turkmenistan produces. It produces 200 billion cubic meters of gas only from one gas field. 50 trillion cubic billion, 50 trillion cubic meters of gas fields. We have Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, also this is one. And the other also sources we are going to rely on will be coming from the Middle East. But how can we be uh, sure that this war going on in Gaza can lead to a regional, greater regional war and conflict would also affect us all. So we have to really be prepared for future. We shouldn't be surprised once again. We were surprised with 9-11. We were surprised with the pandemic. We were surprised with the uh, occupation of Crimea and then Georgia and then this war. So let's stop getting surprised and getting prepared for seriously for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lenk, the kilometers run through Germany so obviously even from that point of view there's, there's vital interest of Germany and I would argue also of the EU in, in a free peaceful and prosperous development of the entire Black Sea region and I think that would also or also answer the second question how do we see the, the region in, in the future I think that there's a lot of potential still unused in the Black Sea and we believe it's worth while thinking about uh, having a more strategic approach um, to um, utilizing this future. In the immediate, of course, the, the challenge is security and we are very grateful 
pay tribute to the um, initiative by Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania uh, on demining uh, the, the waterway. And we are grateful also for um, the Romanian leadership in you know, driving a discussion on, um, on the strategic um, opportunities that the Black Sea region presents. Thanks. Uh, Stephen, there was also a question addressed to you on, I guess it was the strategy as well. So thank you very much. With respect to reconciling uh, the Atlantic Council strategy with that of the State Department, of course there is only one government, so uh, it will be theirs. However, the Atlantic Council does have the opportunity through its, um, its reputation and its convening authority or powers to, to, uh, to have our feelings known. Uh, I had hoped by the time I arrived in uh, Bucharest, I would have a copy of the State Department's paper, and I've not been successful uh, in, in getting that. So I, I can't actually comment on the substantive reconciliation. I apologize for that. Uh, with respect to um, my good friend's uh, reference that uh, Turkey is uh, complying with the spirit and the letter of Montreux, I just have to read some of the letters of Montreux in Article 19 for those who are not without fully familiar. Without going into two... Without going, just going to read one long, sentence. Please. In time okay. of war, Turkey not being belligerent, warships shall enjoy complete freedom of transit and navigation through the straits under the same conditions as those set forth in times of peace. It's not complicated. It's written in English. I even understand it myself, lawyer or not. And uh, that would be a wonderful letter to comply with. With respect to 87 years of practice, I appreciate that can uh, um, uh, bend things, and we can discuss that. Uh, with respect to uh, the question about uh, Black Sea uh, literal states after the, after the war, of course, I'm not in a position to, to answer that. Uh, and and um, finally, um, well, I think I'll stop there. Thank you. So then let's go to, to, to the literal states. Yeah, I will be brief. I think first about the end of war, we do hope that, and we will help Ukraine with all our available resources to restore fully control of uh, uh, its territory uh, within the borders uh, internationally recognized. Then uh, about Moldova, the perspective is that Moldova will be a EU member state. Uh, we are working, we have an ambitious agenda until 2030. Second element is that we are important piece in this framework of solidarity lines. Mm -hmm. uh, when the war stops, we hope to become part of reconstruction lines, which will be helping Ukraine to restore and rebuild its country. And then we will be as well as a EU member state, a state which contributes to European security, but not also, also consumes European security. And we will do it by actively participating in EU operations and missions, but also sharing our experience how to fight against hybrid threats, the experience we are unwillingly accumulating and will be willing to offer to our partners. So first of all, let me say a few words about demilitarization, because I think that we are only at the beginning of a new phase of international relations where we see a lot of remilitarization of foreign policy. So forget about demilitarization. I don't think that there are any chances too soon for that. So uh, I continue to, to believe that if we want peace, we all have to be ready for war, as the old uh, uh, Roman said, civis pacem parabellum. So if you want peace, if, and we all want peace, we should be ready for war. This is, the this is, in my opinion, the best way to deter those who are looking uh, to, military, to, their military, to use their military force as an advantage, you know, in reaching their political goals. Now, uh, speaking about what many will do after, it's very important to see in what kind of terms the conflict, uh, uh, the Russian aggression will end because there are few, 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 few possibilities here. I don't want to speculate. But on the other hand, Black Sea is not only a, a war zone. I mean, yes, war, we have war in the Black Sea, but this is in the northern part. The southern part of the Black Sea continues to be an area where connectivity is important and where countries, you know, are doing their best to do trade, to do commerce, and of course, to, to promote, I mean, to increase their prosperity, promoting, you know, their, their, their uh, 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 relations. And I think that, and Romania, uh, we do our best in, 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 to manage the both agendas at the same time. 
the war agenda, which is uh, uh, sometimes overwhelming us, but also we don't want to lose uh, from our side uh, uh, the uh, connectivity agenda, which is very, very important for the future. And when the war will stop, and in a way or other that will happen, I think that connectivity will be a big, big chance for all the countries in the Black Sea. Yes, energy is there. We are also looking for gas. We are also building platforms. Uh, uh, and I think that, that uh, uh, some some consequences are here with us to stay after after the Russian aggression. You know, a, a very open discussion now we have about how to protect this critical infrastructure for whatever the future will bring, and and I think that also we have to to, to recover back. You know our cooperation in the Black Sea, because there are all kinds of formats of cooperation who for the moment are, are frozen, because there is a big elephant in the room, and we, we will have to also to, to go back, you know, to, to the agendas uh, who are waiting us to see how can we uh, 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 save or how, how we will proceed with the next stages, you know, in the, uh, regarding cooperation uh, uh, on, on, on Black Sea issues. Because Black Sea, as, as I said, is not only about war, it's also about environmental protection, it's about, uh, in a way, uh, solving the problems, environmental problems created by this war, who are very se serious and significant ones. And, and of, of course, that, that, uh, uh, I, I really hope that that moment will come soon, and we will uh, uh, already you know, make the first steps to, to forget these very, very complicated and dangerous situations which we uh, uh, have uh, for the moment. And of course, nothing good will happen without uh, 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 guaranteeing you know, the, the territorial integrity, the sovereignty, the independent, independence of all countries around the Black Sea. And, and when we talk about that, it's not only Ukraine as a state. We have also a, 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 a complicated Moldova. issues regarding our Georgian friends. And, and if I look to some recent statements coming from Moscow, neither Moldova, it is safe or protected, fully protected, you know, from some kind, uh, some, 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 uh, how to say, complicated future intentions. Um, on this note, that uh, the Black Sea is not only about the war; it's also about uh, the future peace and also current preparations for the for the future peace. Um, but a war still needs to be won before that. Uh, I do want to thank the panelists, and I hope that you'll continue the conversation. And as I said, um, and thank you all for being uh, uh, very um, involved in the discussion. Thank you.